so yeah that's our new RV and by now you already know this video is not about it we are not ready to share this RV yet we are still living in between moving boxes so to speak so yeah this video is all about the tool the most important tool a full-timer can have the truck they use to pull their home let's roll the b-roll Constant bird poop. I really need to wash this truck. So yeah, I uh, shot that footage two weeks ago when the truck was nice and clean and now such is island life or should I say life on the road. I've been struggling on putting this video together for the last two weeks because every time I try to talk about the truck I start rambling on and next thing I know it's like an hour long video. Um, yeah, the truck is filthy and if you're wondering really why, let me show you. Man, this RV is tall. I uh, needed to grow a new set of cojones before I was willing to climb up on this thing. So of course it's windy. Not sure if you're gonna pick this up. Hold please. Power lines. Yes, this rig is tall. But if you're wondering why the truck is so filthy and now that I'm looking at it, this RV, yeah, the trash truck's not helping, but look, beach, 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 beach. Oh, look, SpaceX. But yeah, we are on an island surrounded by water. And with that comes beach, sand, dust, storms, everything. And yeah, truck is filthy. All right, now that my heart rate is coming back down and my feet are on solid ground, let's dive into what I call the perfect tool for full timing, which is our 2022 Ram 3500. Now, before we dive into our new dually, let's talk about us for a second for anybody that is new. In summer of 2019, we hit the road with our 2018 Ram 1500, towing our DIY vintage trailer. Now, we had this set up for two and a half years and we learned a ton. I actually have a video out on the 1500 if you're interested. It will be linked in the description below. In the summer of 2021, we made the decision to go to a fifth wheel and we knew we needed to upgrade our truck to something, let's just call it more capable. And we searched from coast to coast, could not find a used truck in our price range because of everything that is going on in the world. So we decided to order one from the factory with the options we wanted. You know what, change of plans. Our neighbor just left, so I'm gonna move the truck from over there to the over there because this side is sandy, that side's not. All right, while I'm getting ready to wash this truck, let's talk about what we ordered. This is a 2022 Ram 3500 Bighorn Crew Cap 4x4 8-foot bed dually. Oh, 
Um, yes, this is a sports edition in olive green. It is pretty, ain't it? Black interior, and we did go with the big guns. The 6.7 liter i6 Cummins HO turbo diesel backed with the six-speed ASIN transmission and yes, the 410 gears. So this setup has 420 horsepower and 1,075 torque. And if you ever wonder about a Ram, how much it can carry and tow, just go to Google, type in Ram truck, VIN towing, something along those lines, and you should get their website. Put in the VIN number of the truck and you will see what that truck can handle. Ours is 5,248 carry and just over 34,000 towing. So we are pretty darn close to what the max is for a Ram 3500. That beep is probably one of the most annoying things when you leave the truck and you have the keys on you, it starts beeping. And yes, I'm leaving the truck on for a couple minutes until it gets to at least 100 degrees for it to be warm enough for me to turn off. Truly, the beeping is annoying when you leave the truck running and have the keys in your pocket. It's also kind of frustrating because unless the keys are on the driver's seat, it beeps no matter what. You can put them in the center console or on a dash or whatever and the truck just doesn't seem to recognize that the keys are in it. So while we're speaking about issues, let's talk about some of the ones that have been interesting. Some I knew, you know, you're going to a diesel, you need to let it warm up before you turn it off. Ka yeah, diesel prices are high right now, but believe it or not, this truck does get better gas mileage than our 1500, which was a Hemi. The cost of maintenance is pretty high too, but I think that's just something you have to accept when you're going with a bigger, better truck. But the number one thing to get used to are the hips. And it took me a very long time to accept the fact that we had to go with a dually. Now I'm not saying that everybody needs to go dually, but when we ran the numbers for the fifth wheel we wanted, I wanted to make sure we had at least 20% to, well, 20% at least to go. So long story short, I never wanted to use the truck more than 80% of its capability. I'm not saying that's what you need to do. I'm just saying that is what we decided to go for. And that's really what this video is about. What we have learned from being on the road for two and a half years with a 1500 and what we wanted our 3500 to be set up as. Okay, this video is not about how bad of a job I am doing cleaning this truck. I have a couple of friends in the detailing business that I am sure are texting me right now and telling me on how bad of a job I am doing. Now that we got the cons out of the way, let's talk about some of the pros or shall I call it the options that we order from the factory. The number one thing that has been a complete game changer is the exhaust brake. The number two is the 50 gallon tank, which is the primary reason why we ended up with a eight foot bed instead of going with a mega cap. Unfortunately, the 50 gallon tank is not available in the mega cap option, but that tank has been a complete game changer with 780 miles range while not towing and over 500 while towing. Some of the other options we went with worth mentioning is the 220 amp alternator, the gooseneck towing prep package, and mm, let's look at the list. 
Oh, how could I forget the 360 degree cameras. Now on the cameras, they, uh, they are not working as well as I hoped. For example, the left and right camera do not turn on when you turn on the turn signal. You can't use it to record what's going around you and the quality is not that great. Would I recommend them? I would say no. However, they do come in extremely handy when you need to park in a tight spot. And when you got a truck of this size with big ol' hips, that comes in handy. Oh, one very big important uh, mod from the factory is the auxiliary switches. Not only do you get the auxiliary switches and everything is pre-wired to fuses and relays and you can program where power comes from and what it does, but you also get a nifty wiring harness so you can add whatever you want. The great thing thus far is everything we have done to the truck has not required us to cut a single wire. That's right, not a single wire on this truck has been cut, everything has been plug and play. When it comes to considering a truck for full-time RVing, obviously consider the power it has and the towing capacity and most importantly carry capacity. That is overlooked 90% of the time. Make sure you calculate how much your family weighs, sorry wives, uh, how much your dogs weigh, how much the stuff you carry on a daily basis weighs, and all the mods. Any modifications you do to the truck are going to add some weight to it. Make sure you calculate that and give yourself a buffer. Like I said, I like the 20% rule just because we were so close on the edge on our 1500 and I really don't want to white knuckle it anymore. You might be wondering if we ordered the factory airbags and the answer is no. Considering the cost, especially when it comes to replacing or repairing, it was just too high and I don't have a lot of control over those airbags. So we opted for the spring suspension and we went with aftermarket airbags. That is later in this video. But let's talk about interior first. Second thing is to make sure you have an interior you're comfortable with. Now our 1500 was a bighorn and we liked that interior so we ended up going with a bighorn again. You want to make sure that you're comfortable but also your kids if you have any. So for the kids make sure you have a comfortable seat, some kind of protection for the seats, something for them to buckle really nicely and to hold their games. One of the biggest issues we had was our truck had no power outlets whatsoever for the back seat, so I had to add them. Next thing, make sure that your phone is easily accessible, you can plug it in easily. We went it with the MagSafes that are plugged in through a regular outlet because the MagSafe chargers don't really work that well with the actual auxiliary plugs for the GPS. Speaking of GPS, no, I am not running any aftermarket ones at all. I run Google Maps because it's the one I like the most. That may change in the future, but all of them have their issues and I rather use the one that I trust 90% of the time. Now one thing that we learned from the 1500 is put a screen protector on the main dash screen immediately. Uh, after two and a half years on the road on the uh, 1500, they told us that in order to get our finger smudges and all the scratches off of it, is to replace the screen. Yeah, that's expensive. Oh, if you're wondering who this little guy is, this is Tuk Tuk, which is also the name of the truck. We name all our vehicles after Disney characters, and this one seemed appropriate. <laughs> 
speaking of interior and comfort, this truck is pretty tall. It is much taller than our 1500, so Braxton and Jessa uh, insisted on a step. And I'm glad they did. These steps made a huge, huge difference. We opted to go with these because they are all aluminum and have some adjustments in them so I can go back and forth, in and out, depending on where we like the step to be. And since the truck is so tall, I felt like I was about to get a hernia getting in and out of the bed of this thing. So I went with a factory hideaway step. Now I ordered this off of Mopar after the fact. And this thing is pretty serious. It bolts all the way through the main frame, but it is a game changer when it comes to getting in and out of the truck. All right, I'm going to let the truck air dry until I hit it with some detailer. This thing from Walmart sucks. This thing, this pressure washer, I bought a year ago um, just because in the vintage we don't have a lot of room. This thing also sucks. We need a real one. Now that we have the room, I guess. Before we get into the major mods, let's talk about some of the minor ones, which seem a little silly, but um, they make life so much easier. For example, this filler cap. What you get from the factory is this little plastic cap that doesn't really do anything. And when you travel a lot, you end up in some dirty places. I mean, South Padre Island, sand flying around everywhere. You don't want that to get into your tanks. Next would be these mud flaps. Depending on what state you're registered in, these might actually be, uh, yeah, required by law. Texas, for example. These are weather techs and some of the best aftermarket stuff I have ever installed. I mean, honestly, you could call these things factory. They are such a good fit. Now, when we ordered these from WeatherTech, I also ordered the window deflectors. These are interesting as they go inside the window rail. They do not glue on on the outside. Verdict is still out if I like that better than the glue versions. But coming from Arizona, where it is ridiculously hot and you always like to have your windows cracked, this has just been one of those staple items that we have put on our vehicles for the past 15 years. As we love to chase good weather, but we really never know where we're going to end up being. And well, we've been in eight degrees for no good reason other than a crazy storm coming through. We opted for a block heater. Now the power cord for the block heater was hiding behind the front license plate. So I installed these to make my life a little bit easier. I put one on the other side of the license plate for our battery tender. Something I just like having on our vehicles, kind of just like the window deflectors. It's been a thing that I just do. Okay, a little bit more of a serious mods are the headlights. They look great, but man, they do not work. And on our first real tow day, we figured that one out extremely quick. So I changed our high beams, low beams, and fog lights over to LED. Actually quite simple to do as, as long as you're not, you know, the rock and have insane arms, then, then you're screwed. Speaking of lights, I always like to add more lights to the back. This time I went with a custom setup only because our truck does have amber turn lights and makes a little bit more interesting. Now, I again did not cut any wires. We wired in one of these distribution boxes into the seven pin, which then allowed me to put in the lights I wanted. These are blinking a little crazy, but that's because they are LED and they're not at the same frequency as I'm recording. Sorry, but you get the idea. Now let's get to the major thing. The number one, the primary reason why you're buying a truck for full timing RV in the first place. And that's the bed. Now, 
Bedliner is, I think, a must have. We didn't opt with a bedliner from the factory just because of everything that's going on in the world. The bedliner would have delayed the truck at the factory. Yeah, go figure. Anyway, so we ended up with Linex and it has made a major difference. As for the first month and a half we had this truck, we scratched this thing to hell and back. This is definitely one of the first things you should do. The next thing is to figure out what kind of bed cover. You're going to need to figure out what will work with your type of hitch not only to cover the hitch or anything you're carrying in the back, but also to make sure you still have clearance for the fifth wheel that you're going to use. Now, we opted for a gooseneck, so we really don't have much of those issues. While you're figuring out what type of bed cover you want to use, you need to weatherproof some of the areas like these pinholes now speaking of cover we went with the pace edwards ultra groove so we can add whatever we want on top the only reason why is we use this cover on our 1500 which was carrying our bikes we really love this cover so we ended up going with it again So if you're wondering if the tonneau cover kept it dry in here, let's see. Yeah, I'd say it's dry. That's the spray I'm going to use on the cover. Lights for the bed are a major thing and on the 1500 we had the factory LEDs which I hated because after about a minute they turned off. So this time around I opted to install my own and I went with amber so I wouldn't kill my night vision every time I needed something out of the truck. Depending on your fifth wheel setup, whether you are going goose box or standard fifth wheel or what have you, the next major thing is to figure out what are you going to be putting in the back of your truck. For us, it's our air system, which is nicely tucked away underneath our Pace Edwards Ultra Groove Tonu cover. I think having an air system is the number one major mod you can do to a full-time truck because it comes in extremely handy. On the 1500 we had basically this full setup but I went with a kit instead of putting it all together myself. This time around I just wanted something nicer, I wanted some heavy duty solenoids, I wanted an aluminum tank, a really good compressor and just overall better equipment, so this is completely custom. What came out? What goes in? The major reason we are running this is threefold. Number one, for our airbags. And we went with uh, Airlift 7500XLs with their own solenoids and everything is controlled through the factory auxiliary switches. I opted for one LED gauge which not only tells me what the tank pressure is but also what the airbags are at. And again, the auxiliary switches allow me to add and subtract air from the airbags. The second major thing is the air nozzle in the rear bumper. Having your own air um, <laughs> while traveling is so important, especially since most gas stations cannot run the PSI that you need. This truck runs at 85 PSI and our trailer runs at 105. And the third 
Well, this one, if you have air on board already, you might as well go with some good air horns. This time around, we went with four instead of one. One thing you don't see is the rear view camera monitor for the trailer. I am currently working on that. No, I did not go with a camera system for the RAM, which we do have the hookups for it, but the quality is not there. So I just decided to go with something aftermarket that is Wi-Fi controlled. The other thing that we might do in the future, uh, well, okay, definitely do, is tires. I think these factory tires are just not up to the task. Which ones we're going for, I don't know yet. If you have any recommendations, leave that down in the comments. And we might be going with a front and rear bumper, but the verdict on that is out. For now, other than getting a decent set of tires, this truck is set up exactly the way I want it. We will see what happens after a couple thousand miles on the road. Well, this truck's clean. Time for me to take a shower. Thanks for watching. Happy travels.